Okay, welcome back to the class, my girls. And in the second part of our class today, we're going to take the story of the view from Saturday. Now, before we take each story, we learned that we have to know the genre of the story, author of the story, and question of the week. So please go and open your books in the page 188 in the reading book. In the reading book. And tell me, what is the genre of the story that we have? Hmm? Humorous fiction. Humorous fiction. Excellent. Humorous fiction. And from, from the name of this uh, of this genre, it means what? Humorous, it means... Uh, the funny? Humor, something funny, something that makes you giggle, makes you laugh. And also fiction... Comedy. Comedy, yes, exactly. And fiction here, it means real or something you made from your imagination? Something you made from imagination. Excellent. So humorous fiction from its name. It's a story that I made from, I make from my imagination. The characters are not real. I make it from my imagination. And during the story, I put what? I put funny words or funny sentences to make you laugh or to make some, some jokes inside the story to make you laugh. That's why I call it humorous. So stories are told with humor about things that could really happen in the real life. And then we have a question of the week. What, what is the question that we have? How can different generations be resources? Okay, how can, can different generations Okay, I want you to go right now to meet the author. Uh, go and open your reading books in the page, in the page 207 to see the author. Her name is E.L. Konigsberg. Uh, so 207, the author. Oh. So the author right here is a woman and she's putting E.L. What does it mean E.L.? It's the first letters of her uh, of her name. A lot of people in America do this thing. They don't give you the, the whole name. They give you only the first letters of their name, and then they give you the last name of their family. So A.L. Kungsberg is Elena. Her, na her real name is Elena Lobel, was born in New York City, the second of three daughters. But she grew up in a small town in Pennsylvania. She was the first in her family to go to college, where she majored in chemistry and met her future husband, whose name is Kungsberg. After teaching science at a school for girls and becoming mother to three children, she began to write humor tinged books that remained her, uh, remind her of her own experience and those of her children and of her students. E.L. Kingsberg says, readers let me know they like books. That, that that have more to them uh, than meet the, uh, meets the eye. Had they not let me know that I never would have written The View from Saturday, that book won the, new, uh, the Newbery Medal in 1997. It was the second time one of Mr. Mrs. Kingsburg um, books received the top honor. Her, her advice to would-be writers is simple, Finish, don't talk about doing it. Do it, finish. Mr. Kingsburg and her husband live in a, on a beach in Northern Florida. So this lady right here is the, our hero of today and our writer of today. And she, was, she used to be what she used to be a teacher of science in school. But then when she got married and she had three children, and after she saw many, many children in her life and she taught a lot of people and then she taught her own children, she thought to herself, now I'm sitting at home, why don't I take advantage of my own experience that I saw in my life and write books about it and let the other people feel those experiences because what I had, many people had the same experience as I did. Many people become teachers, many people after that got married, many people after that have children. So what I have is similar to other people's situation. So let's take advantage of that and write it as books so people can enjoy and can read and can see part of themselves in these books. And this is what makes this woman a very famous woman 
in her time and also to take a top more uh, a top honor uh, medal and a top honor prizes why because the stories that she put is really related to our lives and you feel when you read it that oh my god like she's talking about my life she's talking to me yeah so this woman is very uh, intelligent and she took advantage of her own talent and of her own experience and this is the real writer how to become a real writer if you have an interesting story in your life just take advantage of it and try to share it with people and try to tell it to people then you will uh, attract a lot of readers and a lot of audience okay my girls going back to our story before we start the story let's go and see this video together <coughs> to see what is our story would be about and our story today is about what about how generation can adapt and or, or how we can take uh, the generation as um, resources in our life how can different generations be resources? The games and languages may seem unfamiliar to you, but these preschoolers are learning about their native history. They are learning from a young woman whose mother and grandmother taught her to appreciate the traditions and history of her ancestors. Different generations can contribute differently to a family and society. Older generations can share their vast knowledge of history and traditions like this Native American hoop dancer, whose dance steps were passed down from her grandparents and parents. Older generations can also provide supervision and a watchful eye for children who can't take care of themselves yet. Younger generations can provide a new perspective on life and society and teach their family new ways of looking at things. Younger generations may also be called on to care for grandparents who've become dependent as they grow older and need more help. When families congregate over holidays or during special occasions, it's a great opportunity for all the generations to talk and listen and contribute in their own way. How do you think different generations can be resources? Okay, my girls, like this uh, video showed for us, it showed that different generation is very, very interesting and very important to our lives. Why? Because each generation can participate in our life in a different way and can add different value from the other generation. Like, for example, if you're in your family, when you gather with your family and you have the grandfather and the grandmother, and then you have your uncles and your uh, aunts, and you, then you have your mother and your father, and then you have your older uh, sisters and your older brothers and then you have yourself and then you have the younger children who came after you so right now when you look to to this to the whole family you can find different people different ages different generations and when you sit together on one table what you can see you can see that each person has his own experiences in life and his own values and his own way of thinking when they talk you can take you can take advantage of their thinking and you can uh, understand what they are talking and uh, learn from their experience. This is one thing. Another thing, the older people, they can pass their knowledge for the younger people. And the younger people, they can pass their passion about life and their energy about life to the older people who are not uh, not energetic like before. You will see your grandfather and grandmother, they are not moving like before, they are not laughing like before. So when, when they see younger children, they become so excited and they become happy and they love to play with them and to laugh with them, subhanAllah. Why? Because those children, they bring happiness for the older people. And older people bring wisdom and experience to the younger people. So each generation learn from another generation. And this is how we can use generations as resources. Each one of the generation can, can add a value and experience and a wisdom of life. Let's go ahead right now to our books and open the page 190 in the reading books. <clears throat> Hi, Lean, how are you? Sweetie, we are in the page 190 and we are going to have the story, The View from Saturday. Okay. Okay, 190. This is the page 190. 
My mother insisted that I write a B&B &B letter to my grandparents. I told her that I could not write a B&B &B letter, and she asked me why, and I told her that I did not know what a B&B &B letter was. She explained, not too patiently, that a B&B &B letter is a bread-and-butter letter you write to people to thank them for having you as their house guest. I told her that I was taught never to use the word you are defining in its definition and that she ought to think of a substitute word for letter if she is defining it. Mother then made a remark about how Western civilization was in a decline because people of my generation knew how to nitpick but not how to write a B&B &B letter. I told her that, with all due respect, I did not think I owed Grandma and Grandpa a B&B. &B. And then I stated my case. Fact, I was not just a house guest, I was family. And fact, I had not been their house guest by choice because, fact, she had sent me to them because she had won a cruise for selling more houses in Epiphany than anyone else in the world. And if she had shared her cruise with Joey and me instead of with her husband, my father, I would not have been sent to Florida in the first place. And fact, she, not me, owed them thanks. And further fact, I had been such a wonderful help while I was there that Grandma and Grandpa would probably want to write me a B&B. &B. My brother Joey had been sent to my other set of grandparents who live in a normal suburb in Connecticut. Is Joey writing a B&B &B to Grandma and Grandpa Eberly? Even as we speak, Mother replied. Well, maybe he has something to be thankful for, I said. <laughs> okay, this, this no one writes B&B. What? He, he don't want to write B&B &B letter. <laughs> he doesn't know what does it mean, B&B. &B, and this is what I, what I told you about interaction between generations. Now his mother... The story, you see how the story started Aslam with the humor and started with jokes and what started when with something makes you laugh. Uh, a mother yeah. looks to her, uh, to her son and the story starts like this, like, uh, my son, please write B and B letter. You will be in curious, like in curiosity, like what does it mean B and B letter? Even for me, I don't understand what does it mean. But the boy asked his mother, like, what does it mean B and B letter? Because I don't know what does it mean. She said that B and B letter, it means that bread and butter letter, which means that it's a letter that we write it for the people who host us in their in their houses to thank them for the gathering and for to, to thank them for the visit. Okay. Then she said you have to write this B and B letter for your grandfather and grandmother because they host us for a whole weekend and you should be thankful. Then the boy he what he didn't understand why. Because there, there's a different generation between the young boy and the old mother. There's a, a different generation between them. There's a different age. There's a, a, there's a big gap between his thinking and her thinking. To him, he posed his, uh, his uh, point of view. He said, why should I write B&B in the first place? Like, I didn't ask to go there. You brought me there. This is one thing. Another thing that I am family. I am part of their family. They are not like other hosts from other family or other uh, members they are my family why should i thank them it's their it's my right to be there and their right to, to serve me this is how he thought okay another thing my mom another fact like when i go there when i went there i helped in the house chores i helped to clean with them i helped to be a good person while i was there so why should i write right now b and b letter it doesn't matter they have to write for me because I went there and I helped them. <laughs> this is how he thought the things. And other thing, he has a younger brother. His name is Joey. And he said, my younger brother, jo Joey, he was there also, but he didn't write any other letter. So, so why should I write? So the mother said, no, maybe he wrote his own letter. You don't know. So you have to be a polite person to thank them. Now, let me ask you, my girls, why do you think the mother is asking her child to write a B and B letter. Why she, she is asking him to thank his grandfather and grandmother, why? Don't you think like this boy, that Aslan, it's his right to be in there? Yeah. It's his right to be yes. in there. Okay, should we write a letter or no? What do you think until now? Yeah. What, yeah, tell me. <laughs> yeah, you should write a letter. Why, like, tell me why. 
because uh, uh, their family is going to have a wedding and they, he has to thank, uh, thank him uh, to like uh, that they invite him to, uh, to their wedding. Okay, this is a good and, and something else. Do you think that being a member of a family, of your family, then you don't have to thank, for example, uh, your mother or your grandfather or your brother for giving you something? Yeah. Yeah, you have to thank. You have to thank. Even if you are a member of a family, you have to be polite enough to think about other people and to be caring about other people's feelings and to give them something as a thankful note, maybe thankful letter, mm -hmm. to know that you are really appreciated and you really like it. And maybe next time they will invite you more and more and they will give you more and more, right? But if you are yes. being rude yes. every time and you go there and you eat and you sleep and you do whatever you like, and you just go home without even mentioning it or without even calling them back, then this is being um, a bad attitude and a rude attitude to act, especially for the older people, because the older people, what they like, they like the feeling that you like them and you really care about them. So if you show them a little note, that would be big thing for them. But if you just go and come without saying anything, it would be so hard for them in their, in their hearts because they will thought that, or they will think to themselves that you don't like them, okay? This is the main thing that the mother want this boy to understand. Let's keep reading and see what happened next. Mother drew in her breath as if she were about to say something else about what children of my generation were doing to Western civilization, but instead she said, right, and closed my bedroom door behind her. I opened the door and called out to her, can I use my computer? She said, and then out the window, door, window, door, window. There was no escape. I took a box of note paper out of my desk drawer. The notes were bigger than postage stamps, but not by much. I took out a ballpoint pen and started pressing it against a piece of scrap paper, making dents in the paper, but not making a mark. Ballpoint pens sometimes take a while to get started. When I was down in Florida, Tilly Nachman had said, the ballpoint pen has been the biggest single factor in the decline of Western civilization. It makes the written word cheap, fast, and totally without character. My mother and Tilly should get together. Between them, they have come up with the two major reasons why Western civilization is about to collapse. Not because I was trying to save Western civilization, but because I wanted to actually get my B&B &B letter written, I put the ballpoint pen back into the drawer and took out my calligraphy pen, the one that uses wet ink. I didn't fill it. I would fill it when I was ready to write. I also took out a sharpened pencil and a pad of post-it notes to jot down any ideas that might come to mind. I wrote Red Wagon. The Red Wagon had definitely been a gift, even though under the circumstances I didn't bring it back to Epiphany with me. I thought a while longer and wrote Tuxedo T-shirt. It too had been a gift, but I didn't have... Flip the page. <clears throat> that either. I wrote calligraphy pen and bottle of ink. A wet ink pen and a bottle of ink had been given to me, but the ones I took out of my desk drawer were ones I had bought myself. The calligraphy pen made me remember about the post-it notes I had bought to correct the problem that had developed with the ink. Even though I had bought the post-it notes myself, I added post-it notes to my list. I peeled off the post-it note containing my list and stuck it on the wall in front of my desk, and then, as my mother had commanded, I thought again. Century Village, where my Gershom grandparents live, is not like any place I had ever been to. It is in Florida, but it is not exactly Disney World or Sea World or other regular destinations. It is like a theme park for old people. Almost everyone who lives there is retired from useful life. Grandma Sadie and Grandpa Nate fit in nicely. It all started when Margaret Draper and Izzy Diamondstein decided to get married, and the citizens of Century Village called a meeting in the clubhouse to organize the wedding. 
In their former lives, Grandma Sadie and Grandpa Nate had owned a small bakery right here in Epiphany, New York. So Grandma volunteered to do the wedding cake, and Grandpa Nate, whose chief hobby had always been violin playing, promised to arrange for the music. Mr. Cantor, a retired postman from Pennsylvania who was devoted to growing orchids, said that he would have enough blossoms for the corsages. And Mrs. Kirchmer said that she would lend her African violets for the centerpieces. Tilly Nachman volunteered to do the invitations, and Rabbi Friedman, who was a rabbi in his former life, said he would perform the ceremony even though Margaret Draper was not Jewish and Izzy Diamondstein was. This was a late second marriage, and there wouldn't be any concern about what religion they should choose for their children, since all their children were already grown up and chosen. Grandpa Nate later explained to me that unlike the average citizen of Century Village, rabbis don't have former lives. They are what they were, once a rabbi, always a rabbi. Many citizens of Century Village were widows who had once been great family cooks, so they formed a committee to plan the wedding dinner. Everyone agreed to share the cost, and they made up a menu and a master shopping list. After that first meeting, Grandpa Nate and I took Tilly Nachman, a former New York City person who had never learned to drive, to the stationery store so that she could buy the invitations. While she shopped for the invitations, Grandpa and I went to Walmart to pick up Grandma's prescription, and that is when we saw the Red Wagon special. Grandpa bought it for me, and it's a good thing he did. It came in handy until Alan came along. I checked my list. Post-it notes. I had bought them when we ran out of invitations. Of course, we didn't run out of invitations until Tilly's cat got its paws into the ink. Tilly was filling in the who, what, when, and where on the invitations when I noticed that she had the prettiest handwriting I had ever seen. Calligraphy, she said. It means beautiful writing. And she asked me if I would like to learn how to write like her. I said yes. She said she would give me lessons if I would help her address the envelopes. So Grandpa drove us to an art supply store where she bought me a calligraphy pen and a bottle of ink. It was while Tilly was trying out various pen points, called nibs, that she made. Okay, my girls. <clears throat> Until now, he is what they are what doing right now. What do you think? He wrote a calligraphy pen and a bottle of ink. And then uh, she told him that, like, the writing of you is nice. Excellent. So why he's bringing the, callig the calligraphy and he's trying to write what? What he's trying to write right now? The mm. B and B letter. B and B letter. And something else, he's trying also to help with the invitation of the wedding. They have a wedding right yeah. now to do. And this wedding, before they have the wedding and to prepare everything, they have to invite people and to tell them that in that specific day, we are going to have a wedding. So please come to our wedding. When they wanted yeah. to arrange and arrange the wedding and prepare everything uh, that is used for the wedding, they have a shop list that they they should bring it from the market and to bring it to the house to fix all the things other thing they have to do also is to write what to write the invitations in and then dress it inside envelopes nice and dressed envelopes and to give it to the people to invite them to the wedding now when he saw the, cal the calligraphy of his uh of his grandmother, he liked it so much that he wanted to learn about it. And she said that I will make you learn about it if you just, just a minute. Calligraphy, uh, let me show you. This is the calligraphy, my girls. It's a very beautiful handwriting, but yeah. it's written in a specific uh, pin. This is the, the pin that is used for the calligraphy. It's a pin with a what? Uh, with a special a special head right here it's a nib um nib uh, pin yeah i must i have it in my house yes yesterday yesterday i tried to use it yes this kind of pin you should put some ink in it to give you this beautiful handwriting and when you write the special thing about it that this head it will give you a nice and a smooth uh handwriting that is better than any other color and any other uh any other pen that's why they use a special uh, pen for this writing. The more, 
that you want your handwriting to be um, uh, sophisticated and more nice, then the, 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 the more that you have to bring a pin like this one. So this is the calligraphy pin that he's asking about. Then his grandfather went to the shop and he bought for him a calligraphy pen to write with. This is how they write with the calligraphy pen, my girls. Yeah. Okay. It's very nice. Right. Let's flip the page right now and let's start reading. Who wants to read? Uh, one by one. Ralia. Let's start with Ralia. The remark about the ballpoint. The remark about the ballpoint pen be being the biggest single factor in the decline of West civilization. After choosing a nip, Tilly said, I hope in the future, Noah, that you will use a ballpoint pen only when you have to press hard to make multiple carbons. I couldn't promise that. Where were times in school when a person had to do things fast, cheap, and without character? Tilly said, there are pens that come with ink in the carriage, Noah, but I will have nothing to do with them. So when we were back in the condo, Tilly taught me how to fill pen or, as she said, how to properly fill a pen. One turn on the filling plunger. Plunger. Clockwise, mm -hmm. far as it go, it will go. Two, dip the nib completely into the ink. Three, turn filling plunger clockwise until it stops. Four, hold the nib above the ink bottle and turn pl the plunger counterclockwise again. Until three drops, the ink fall back into the bottle. Five plunger clockwise to stop the six, the drops. Six wipe the excess ink completely from the pen, and nip. And nip. When I told, hmm, when I told Tilly that six steps seemed a lot to have to do before you begin. Begin, she said. You must think of those six steps not as prepare, pre, preparation for the beginning, put, but as the beginning itself. I practice cal my calligraphy. I practice all 26 letters of the alphabet, including X, which was not part of any of who of the who, what, when, and where, or any of the address, but, but it is a very good letter to practice because it's not easy, fact. Because when Tilly decided, hmm. when Tilly? When Tilly decided that I was good enough to help the invitations, I sat on the floor of her living room and used her coffee table as my desk. She sat at the kitchen table. Fact, many of those domicles in this... Domicles in century. In this century village do not have family rooms with desks. Where was a lot of writing to do because at the bottom of each and every one of those invitations we wrote your your presence your presence but not presents your the presence. remark presence that's enough thank you so much yeah dalia your reading is amazing because your voice mashallah is clear and loud it's very nice what you need though is to practice more reading so inshallah your reading will be faster and more smooth However, overall, okay. I will give you like 9 out of 10. Excellent, ya Galia. Let's go ahead and complete with Watin. Hi, Watin. Tilly said... Tilly said that practically all the invitation that went out from Century Village said that. Besides, she said, 
I think that making the wedding is enough of a present. I was doing a wonderful job until Thomas Trent called T.S. Tilly Cat pounced into my lap and I jumped up and spilled the, the ink. And the cat walked through a, the, the spilled ink and into, onto a couple of the invitations. I was addressing a few five altogether now had cats found. Tilly was pretty upset because she had not bought extras because she said, I don't make mistakes. In her former life, Tilly had been a book, uh, Tilly had been a bookkeeper. I heard her say, I can add up a column of figure with the best of, the, of them. I that's, didn't know if she that, meant. That's enough. Okay, let's complete with um, Waleen before we finish the class. Hi, Aline. I didn't know if she meant here. I didn't know if she meant the best of the computers or the best of the bookkeepers. And I didn't ask because I was afraid I already knew. I told Tilly, I told Tilly not to worry. I told her that I would think of something. And I did. That's when I bought the post-it notes. I put a post it into each of the invitations that had a cat's paw mark on the post it. I wrote in faultless calligraphy. Mm -hmm. Bring this specially marked invitation to the wedding and receive a surprise gift. When Tilly asked me what the surprise would be, I told her not to worry, that I would think of something. And I did. But in fact, it wasn't as easy. Excellent. That's enough, the day, That's the... enough, Lee. That's enough, sweetie. Okay, we'll stop right here, my girls. Right now, He's writing the invitations and he's trying to fix his handwriting in the calligraphy that he has. But what happened that his cat came in and he ruined some of the letters with his paw. <laughs> and he wrote with, uh, we, he walked over the ink and he put his paw inside the ink and he ruined some of the letters. Next time, inshallah, we are going to complete what happened in this story and what happened in this invitations. Uh, and these invitations and we are going to see if his handwriting would success and he will attract people to come to the wedding or not this is what you are going to learn shall next time however you can go ahead and complete the story by your own and practice it in home inshallah until we come on wednesday you are going to know what happened with me inshallah okay 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 do you have any question my girls before we stop no thank you. no Okay, thank you so much for being here. I'll see you inshallah tomorrow. Until then, stay safe and be okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.